So my band is about to do the scariest thing imaginable. But before I tell you about it, I think it's important to give you a bit of backstory, kind of how we got here. Hey, my name is Dean Lemon. I play in the technical death metal band Archspire from Vancouver, Canada, which is where we are right now. So I want to give you a brief history, kind of like of the band leading up to the moment that we're at now. So you have all the contexts. We officially formed in 2009 and we recorded our first EP, All Shall Align, in 2010. Uh, we eventually did release that through a small European label, but we put it out ourselves at first. So we played a few local shows and we had this like CD in like a paper slip. Uh, thinking back, I don't know who would have done that in the band, but we had them and we sold them in local shows and we wanted to expand, grow, get out of Vancouver. So that was our goal. <laughs> So we decided to book our first cross Canada tour in 2011. So we played 20 shows across 21 days, which is just like nuts when I think about it. It's like super ambitious to do that as like a first time headlining band. The likelihood of you losing money on that tour is like so high. And that's exactly what we did. We lost tons of money, but we loved it. I, I remember some of the turnouts of the shows on this tour, like in Edmonton, we played to one person. And that dude came up to us and after the show, and he says, hey, that was like a great show. Can you buy me a beer? We played like small clubs, like less than 100 capacity, like small bars uh, in most of those markets. I remember like Regina was like 10 people. Saskatoon was probably less. I remember like specifically Quebec City, three dudes at that show. They drove 10 hours to come see us. And I still, I don't really, like, how do they hear about us? It's just like nuts. I blew our minds at the time, honestly. Back then, advertising, your music was like a lot different at the time. It was more like we're putting our MySpace uh, link up on tour posters and I think Spotify was like a couple years old maybe at the time. I don't even think we knew about it, honestly. I don't know if we had our music. I doubt we had our music up on there. So. One of the things that people did to find music was they had like a website and you might have a band that you want to check out and there's like a download link there and you'll check it out. And the promoter for the Toronto show put up a download links for all of the bands that were playing that night. And we were, we were headlining that show and ours hit like a download limit of like 250 or something like very, very fast. First off, that was like, holy shit, like 250 people wanted to listen to our band. It's like, I remember that show being really actually pretty sweet. So by total luck, one of the people that had downloaded that track uh, was a dude that had just left Relapse Records, just got hired at this record company called Season of Mist. So the first thing that he did was took this download link or the song or whatever, and he sent that to the president of the label and he said, sign this band. But we didn't know that, but that's what happened. The next year, like somehow, and it's it would take way too long for me to explain this, but uh, just like luck and just ridiculous circumstance, we landed uh, an opening slot on a European tour supporting like our favorite bands, uh, the band Decapitated, the band Aborted, and uh, Flesh God Apocalypse. So these three bands are like, holy shit. <laughs> While we're on that tour, we had a meeting with the president of Season of Mist Records, and that led to what has now been a 10 plus year long relationship. And uh, one thing that I value the most out of that relationship, other than the the things that a, a record label would normally do, uh, we got a lot of mentorship from Gordon Conrad, the guy who initially found us and sent our track over to the president of the label. And that dude, even today, 
continues to teach me like the most important things about the music industry. And I know that he probably will watch this video and he's probably watching me say this right now. And I know that he doesn't like it when people say really nice things about him, but uh, buddy, I love you. You're, you're the best. So over the next few years, we slowly started cultivating like a fan base across Canada. I, I, a fan base, people that liked us. It wasn't big or anything, um, but it was growing. And we started breaking a bit into the U.S. Uh, market in 2013, I think, for the first time. And then in Europe, uh, we it took us, I don't even, eight years to get back to Europe, seven years after that. So uh, it, it took a while, but we started building up these markets and, and cultivating some fan bases in some of them. Uh, but we really only started turning a profit, anything like real in 2017. And when I said real, I just mean enough that we could maybe pay our rent when we get back, you know, like, because back in the day, like the early, early days, you know, you would pull up to a gas station and I'd be like, okay, it's Toby's turn to pay for gas. That's like dark, you know, <laughs> you're not making anything. You're in the red at all times. We spent many years on the outside of what we thought was like an exclusive club of bands and managers and tour bookers, right? So every time I saw another band get a support slot for something that I thought maybe would be good for us, I would feel like pain. And I know that's not good. It's not healthy. But I had a lot of jealousy and envy for other bands, uh, you know, in our genre that are smaller or bigger, anything really that would get these opportunities. And instead of, you know, letting that be defeating we just used it as kind of fodder to help us push harder. We're like, we're going to get those. We're going to do this. So fast forward two albums and many tours later uh, to 2021. We released an album called Bleed the Future. And we suddenly noticed like a new wave of people listening to us. And our video views were like going up and our streams were going up and our album sales were higher than pretty much ever. So we thought we need to capitalize on this. This is right after COVID. So we booked a North American tour to support the album in 2022. And somehow we sold out 19 of the 30 shows on that tour. And that is insane, dude. Like it makes, it still makes no sense, honestly. Like I think back to some of the stuff and I go like, how did that even happen? It, it was pretty recent, but I still think like this, like maybe that was a fluke or something, or maybe like it was just the right place, right time, or maybe it was COVID. I, I don't know. It was an amazing experience. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's very surreal to see that kind of stuff happen. So now under the title of the video, the scariest thing imaginable, we're going to do it again. <laughs> we're not, we're not just doing like the, the exact same tour with the same venues and same support bands. Although all those bands were crushing and we had great times and, and I, it was amazing to meet all the, uh, the awesome fans at every market, but we're now doing a headlining tour with the biggest venues we've ever headlined in our entire career. So you might think, isn't that exciting, not scary? Okay, I'm going to tell you why it's scary. So when you're headlining, you're you're taking the responsibility of the show doing well on your shoulders. So there's always a chance you might have some like unmotivated promoter or those like unforeseen circumstances that you can't control. Like that, that stuff happens, dude. Uh, that kind of stuff isn't really the end of the world when you're playing venues that are like pretty small like we did earlier in our career. Because the minimum, a minimum amount of people that you need for that promoter to like break even is like a lot lower and the venue cost is a lot lower and the risk is just like a lot lower. But we're not playing those small venues now. So some of the venues in this tour are like triple or quadruple the size of our last headliner. That's great. I mean, think about that stuff. Kind of just, it kind of keeps me up at night a little bit, honestly. Just hoping that we have the capability to fill the large rooms that we've been booked in. So of course we made sure that we would like to, we need the best bands to play with us. So we're playing with like one of the bands we first toured with ever aborted. They're going to be on the tour with us. There's a new band uh, called Carcosa. They're from Vancouver as well. If you know YouTube guitar stuff, Andrew Bana, uh, he's a buddy of mine, uh, his band Carcosa. And then my buddy Wes Hauk, who's this incredible guitar player, his band, Alluvial, is also on the tour. So, like, we're very lucky that we managed to secure a crushing lineup. Another thing that I kind of go, like, how the hell did we do that? <laughs> so, the, okay, what's the point of the video? Okay, the point of the video is to outline that instead of waiting for offers to come to us, we pushed forward in our own way by just being stumbled and, and relentless, honestly. We lost money on, like, every fucking tour. <laughs> But we knew that we had like something that made us happy. And so we figured somebody else might also listen to it and, and feel happy. Uh, or uh, a release, uh, emotional something. They might enjoy the musicianship. 
It's something. They'll enjoy it. It's entertainment. It's something that they want to hear. There wasn't really like an option to stop. It was just keep doing it. So we pushed ahead. Uh, and if you're ever in a, like a similar situation, think about like think about like this. So if it feels right, then it probably is. If it's forced and you're like, man, this is just like not working. It's not fulfilling um, as a creative kind of outlet. Uh, you know, everybody's mad all the time. That kind of stuff happens. But if it's a net positive in your life, then it's probably likely that it'll also be a net positive in somebody else's life. And maybe many people. Uh, you never know. There's always a chance. Uh, those things take a long time to gain traction, like many, many years. We've now been a band for, I guess, 15 years. But when and if it does happen, it's like the most fulfilling and rewarding thing ever. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to make this video just about like how doing a tour like this makes me feel as an artist because maybe that's a, a unique perspective because um, I'm just playing guitar and I'm just writing music and we're just like five dudes that want to do this kind of stuff. And if you are anything similar, we share something, you and I. But anyway, so if you want to come check out the tour, I I would absolutely love it if you did. Um, I know I see so many people at every single show coming up to me and saying, I love your YouTube channel. I found the band through the YouTube channel. Me and my wife watch you guys play music and she doesn't even play guitar or whatever. That stuff is amazing. Please come up and, and say, hey, I would really appreciate it. There's a ticket link in the description. And there's also a really cool VIP meet and greet uh, upgrade that's not like other VIP meet and greets. It is going to be very unique and very interesting. And if you want to be a part of that, there's a link as well. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for putting up with me in this video and, uh, and I'll see you on tour.